Okay, this exercise is um, working our tidal differences uh, using the rule of twelfths. Um, in an area where you have uh, a sort of reasonable range, say one and a half to maybe two and a half meters, you can use the rule of twelfths. When it comes to more extremes, you've got to use uh, curves and tables for those specific areas. Okay, so you need to understand two things about tide. One is the speed at which the tide comes in. And the other one is the amount of water that comes with each of that bit of speed. So if you think about the tide, when the tide's really high, it's slack tide. And when it's really low, it's also slack tide. But in between, the tide is moving as it comes in or goes out. So if you consider we have, if we divide the, the, the time up into six different periods, um, you're going to see that the tide moves at... Uh, one times the speed in the first period, two times the speed in the second period, three times the speed in the third period, four times in the fourth period, sorry, three times in the fourth period, two times in the fifth period, and once in the sixth period. So if we have a look at our high water and our low water, and we work out the difference between the two, we can get the number of minutes in each period. One, two, three, four, five, six. So by converting the period difference into minutes divided by six periods, we get a 62 minute period. So if you look at 1600, 702, at least that is 0600, 0702, 804, What we also need to do then is have a look at the difference, in other words, the range, and the range is 2.4 meters. Now, if we know that we're going to get 1 plus 2 plus 3, that's 6 plus 3, that's 9 plus 2, that's 11, plus 1, that's 12 units, we need to work out how much each unit is. So we divide it by 12, and we end up with 0.2 meters per unit. If we then go on the other side of the scale, and we start with our low water at 1.2, in the first period, we're going to get an extra 0.2, the second period, an extra 0 0.4, third, 0 0.6, 0.6, 0.4, and 0.2, and we add those to each period, we'll eventually go from 1.2 meters to our full high water tide at 3.6 meters. Okay, now why do we do all of this? Because we want to know when we can enter an area that has a certain amount of water, and we need to know that we have sufficient tide in addition to chart datum. So we use an example, say our draft is 2 meters, we want to have a clearance below that of another 0.5, so we need total water of 2.5 meters. We have a look at the chart in the area, and we see it already has 0.5. So we need 2 meters of tide, which is what this whole exercise is all about. When are we going to get 2 meters of tide? We're going to get 2 meters of tide between 8.04 and 9.06, between 1.8 and 2.4. That's now a whole 62 minutes. So when in that period will we have the extra water? So how much extra do we need? If we're looking for 2 meters, we subtract the 1.8 and we get 0.2 meters of water in addition to what we need. So in other words, in that period, 0.6 meters of water came in. We only need 0.2 of the 0.6 meters. In other words, we need 1 third of water. So if we then carry that over to here and we look and we say, well, okay, in this period, there was 62 minutes. We only need one third of. We can then look at it and just do an estimate here. So one third of 62 is going to be 20 minutes. So if we add 20 minutes to the 804, therefore means 
8.04 plus 20 minutes at 08.24 we will have 2 meters of tide. Now the exact same can be done if we decide to now look at say how much water will we have at 10.38 okay so that's going to be 30 of the 62 which means we're looking at half of 0.4 so from three meters half of 0.4 is going to be a plus 0.2 therefore at 10 38 we're going to have three point two meters of tide. Hope that helps and makes sense. If you've got any questions, give me a shot.